Hey everybody, hope you're doing well today. So welcome to today's video where we talk about Orchestral Tools newest library called Time Macro. And uh, it's a really special one because it kind of deviates from their Metropolis Arc series and um, Berlin series. And whereas the Berlin series is kind of your workhorse everyday, uh, you know, orchestral library and the Metropolis Arc series, especially catered to the trailer side of things, you know, still orchestral, the Time Macro is orchestral as well, but in a different way. And its specialized focus is kind of intended um, for you to have a library where all the samples have a sense of movement. And even the sustains themselves, you know, they, they have this motion in them that really convinces the listener that, uh, you know, that it's real players and there's, you know, motion going on. And so I wanted to show you kind of the structure of this library and some, you know, some of the key features behind it. So what I thought I'd do is actually start with uh, one of my favorite sections. So here you can see there's the multi-instruments uh, with combined and individual sections. I'm going to start with the single instruments. By the way, time machine patches are basically ones where you can uh, tweak the speed of your samples in real time. So if you wanted to stretch you know, the time of a string sample, for example, you can actually do that. Um, but they actually leave the release samples unaffected. So it still sounds realistic. But anyway, Let's go to the individual sections. I wanted to start with the high woodwinds. Um, you'll notice here that this library is comprised of strings, woodwinds, brass, and choir. There's some other goodies in there as well, uh, like harps and vibes, and uh, you know that's one of the standout features as well. But you know it's it's really catered towards this fluttery and uh, movement-like texture. So let's start with the high woodwinds, and you can see in the in the single patches here, we have a ton of different articulations. So let's just start with the high sustains. So it's a very beautiful, gorgeous, flowing sound. It doesn't sound static at all. And, uh, you know, a lot of libraries, you can hear the looping in them. Uh, this library, it just sounds like it's a continuous moving sustain, which is exactly what it's intended for. Another feature I wanted to show you was their airy patch, which actually sounds, you know, very airy. So. You know, and sometimes you'll want this airier sound, maybe for something more uh, fantasy or when you have wind blowing around everywhere in your scene, that could work. Um, some flutter sustains. Right, so such some flutter tongue stuff. Um, now staccato ad lib is pretty cool. So they basically play staccato on their instruments uh, wherever they feel they want to, so. So saying swells. And again, these are basically like swelling whenever they feel like it. Um, one of the standout features though of this library is the clockwork patches and uh, just have a listen to this. And right now my mod wheel's at the bottom, so if I raise it up, So in addition to the one and two and three and four, and you also hear the triplets on the top. And uh, it's pretty cool because, you know, as you would expect with a mod wheel, the more you drive it up, the more stuff happens. And in this case, you get rhythmic complexity as well as, you know, just an additional color.
and this is only the uh, the second uh, Clockwork Tonal patch. There's also the first one, which sounds really, really good. And see if I can find that one. Let me just put it put it in. I thought I loaded both of them. That's okay. I like this one even more, the first one. So it starts with the one, two, and three, and four, and then. Even more. So you hear that flute in the top. Right, let's add some more. So yeah, this library really calls out for layering, honestly, and a lot of these patches sound really good if you, you know, put them on top of each other because the instruments interplay with each other. You know, it's one of those libraries that has constant motion and uh, it really works. And then finally, we have some clockwork noises in case you didn't want the tonal ones, you can just have the sounds imitating a clock, so. Got some triplets. You know, with different accents on the beats. And what's really cool is you can actually shift the tempo as well, so you can bring it to half the time. And I had to switch off auto tempo, so. Right. So just make sure your um, your tempo is actually appropriate so it doesn't feel like it's actually slowed down. Um, and then as well, you can double it. Which sounds pretty good in itself. Oops. And anyway, that's the, that's the basic premise there. And that's just the high woodwinds, so let's give these a delete and let's move on all right and then we got low woodwinds as well so it's kind of like you know the lower side of the woodwind section you can hear it, it's actually an octave you hear the air in that sample as well show you the fifth drops. These are pretty cool as well. Let's see what these sound like. Right, so it's not just sustains, it has those, you know, fifths dropping down uh, from above, which is pretty cool. And uh, in, a, in many ways, it's very similar to the high woodwinds. Let's try some strings. So let's hear the High string sustains saltasto. Saltasto is basically when these uh, string players are playing closer to the fingerboard, and so you get a more thin and airy sound, which kind of sounds like this. Dynamic range here, PP to MF. pretty. And then the Sol Ponticello is when they're playing closer to the bridge, so you get a more nasally sound. Okay. You know, all of these articulations, if they if they have a sense of movement to them, none of them really go too quickly. It's it's more of a like held back kind of library. So for example, we have the very slow tremolo here. Right, it's quite slow and it you can tell that there's movement in those samples, which is really nice. Some harmonics. These are probably better as at the softer dynamics. Okay, and uh, let, let's hear the echo swells actually. Let's see what these sounds like. So it's basically one swell followed by another larger swell. And 
then finally the clockwork tonal sounds like this. So here you start with 16s. Triplets layered in at the octave. I mean, that, that's just amazing when you can actually introduce more texture as you, you know, ride the monumental up. And let's, take, let's explore the harps and vibes. See what this sounds like. See the choirs here. For orchestral tools, their choir is usually a standout feature, and you know, starting in Metropolis Arc One, it's always been a highlight of you know, of the series, and in this series, it's no different. See the zzz. some really cool syllables here. Right, so you can have a lot of fun with these. Let's hear those fifth drops with a choir here. Right, so I'm playing an A. And then the choir is going e a e a from above. All right, and then some clockwork noises. Where are they? Right here. So starting with the tongue clacks, then you get snaps. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. And then the men choir, again, a very, very solid patch. Here we have an octaves. Octaves again. Nice. Let's hear some air air in those symbols. Hear that air. It's almost like breathing, you know? Um, okay, let's keep going. Let's hear this brass now. Soft, open, brass sustains. So you can see the highest range here goes up to F. It's a, it, you know, this library doesn't focus on any of the blaring stuff. Um, the soft straight mute sounds like this. here so short crescendos now these are pretty emphatic holy moly that's loud okay <laughs> so the dynamic is slightly inconsistent uh, across some of the patches but it's to be expected you know it's a it's a crescendo and then finally
Let's do that again. And of course, the Teldex sound is, is amazing, as usual. And yeah, that, I mean, that's pretty much the individual sections. And then when they combine, you know, these different sections, then you get um, more easy access to the full sections without having to, you know, combine the individual ones. Of course, individual sections give you a little more flexibility. Uh, another standout feature is the alter time section in which they basically slow down the time of the samples or they even reverse them. So let me just show you what Chrono Reverse sounds like. This is verging into, you know, sound design territory, but you don't have to design it yourself. They've already done it for you. So right away, what this reminds me of is kind of like when you watch a show in the doctor's office and you see the um, the machines beeping, you know, while a patient's in the bed. It's like beep, 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 that kind of thing. I get that kind of eerie feeling. It's a really beautiful texture, honestly. Uh, let's try another one. How about reversed fifth shimmering? Let's start with one note. That was only two notes, guys. So that's B flat and F, and this is C and G. So by pressing one note here, you already got two. And you know, it's just beautiful. Now let's try the slow brass motion. I'm just having too much fun here, guys, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm hearing C and I'm hearing F. You know, Orchestra Tools clearly had a lot of fun in this, deciding, you know, different note combinations and stuff to put in. And then finally, we got the orchestra, full orchestra, uh, with some of these articulations. Let's hear air, full orchestra air. This might be cool. I love that. Like this is literally an airy sound. It's so cool. Um, okay, let's hear Choir and Strings Clouds. These are really some really creative names. So you can hear we have the uh, dropping fifths. But also kind of like a, some kind of a glissando-like feature, or almost like a tremolo, you know, to keep that motion going, which is really neat. Okay, finally, let's move into the multis, and this is... You know, this is basically the single patches, but with all these articulations combined. So here it's easy for them to just present it in, you know, each of the sections. And just to show you what that looks like, um, you know, you have all these articulations here. And they go through this pretty in-depth in the walkthrough video. Let's take a look at the uh, combined sections. So let's just use the uh, choir multi, for example. So here's the uh, sustains. Then we got the uh, ooze. Ah, uh, sorry. These are more like ahs. And then we got the z. These are definitely more of a niche articulation than uh, than the ahs and the ooze, or the ahs, I should say. And the the ns. I'm impressed that they can do this. You know, when I go, mm, my nose gets itchy, so. Okay, I've got a couple swells here. Let's do this one. So, sustains of us with ad libs. So, just another creative combo there. And we got some pitch slides. That's pretty neat as well. Um, let's just do one more here. How about this one? Sustains, second drops. Hmm. 
right? So really beautiful. And yeah, I mean, the whole concept of this library is built up on motion and momentum, you know, having samples that continue to evolve over time. And it really just gives you a basis of something that's flowing and something that's not static because that's the whole point of samples. You know, you don't want something that just drones on forever and sounds lifeless. Um, Orchestral Tools took this to a new level and they really focused on that component especially. So it'll be interesting to see in the future if they go with something called Time Micro or um, Time Micro 2 potentially. Uh, maybe they'll include percussion, you know, even. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a whole new world of that <laughs> where they can experiment. But uh, in this library, it's a great, great starting point. They come with, you know, strings, woodwinds, brass, and um, choir. All stuff that they've done super duper well in in the past in their individual libraries, like Berlin strings and uh, their woodwinds and brass and and uh, the heart. They Berlin symphonic harps. I have to give a shout out to because it's a really uh, beautiful library and um, it's very versatile as well. I made a review of that a while ago. But anyway, in any case, uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope this uh, review has given you kind of more of an insight to what the library can do. I, for one, really like the sound, as always, of the Teldex scoring stage and the way Orchestral Tools records their products is just gorgeous. And so um, definitely support the company if you're looking for a sample library that has that sense of motion in their sustains and gives you a breadth of really unique articulations that are not very common anywhere else, then this is definitely worth a look. So thank you so much for watching and until the next time, uh, have a great day. See you in the next video, guys. Bye.